In this video, we're going to learn all about the nervous system. So we'll learn that the nervous system is broken down into the CNS, the central nervous system, and the PNS, the peripheral nervous system. And we'll learn about the structure and the function of neurons. So first of all, the nervous system is broken down into the central nervous system, the CNS, which consists of the brain and the spinal cord. And then it's also broken down into the peripheral nervous system, which consists of the nerves that extend to and from the central nervous system, from the muscles and the organs of our body. So the peripheral nervous system is broken down into somatic nerves, and somatic nerves are voluntary, so they're made of skeletal muscle fiber, which we'll talk about a little bit later, and they are broken down further into sensory nerves that collect information from our surroundings and motor nerves that bring information from the central nervous system back to muscles and tell them to contract. The autonomic nerves or the autonomic nervous system is broken down into sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems and this part of the nervous system is in, under involuntary control. We can't select when, or, when to send a nerve impulse or not to the autonomic not nervous system. So our central nervous system is divided into our brain and our spinal cord and both of these are protected by bone. So our spinal cord is surrounded by the bony spinal column and it's made up of several vertebrae so that we can actually have motion and bending ability within our back and our spinal cord flexes with that. And then our brain is encased by the skull, which is an excellent protective unit, but sometimes it can be problematic. For instance, if you suffer concussion or brain injury, if your brain hits your skull in a sudden impact, it actually can cause bruising and injury and swelling and your brain because it's enclosed by the skull actually doesn't have room to expand so sometimes we'll have to even remove a portion of your skull to allow your brain to expand and heal and then contract back down um, because of this so concussions are and brain injuries are very um, problematic if you would like to learn a little bit more about the brain and see some intriguing videos, there is an interesting TED talk on entitled, What Can You Do With Half a Brain? It's about a neurosurgeon that has, because of severe epilepsy and severe seizures, has had to remove an entire hemisphere of a child's brain to prevent these seizures and to give them some normalcy of life. But it, it goes into the amazing plasticity or ability of our brain to adapt. And these patients actually are able to recover a lot of the function of the missing half of their brain on the hemisphere that they have remaining. Another video is entitled UR2. And it's quite interesting because it talks about our left brain versus our right brain. It's quite intriguing and it, it kind of makes your brain hurt when you watch it because you may not be aware that your one hemisphere of your brain has more of a voice than the other so it's quite intriguing your peripheral nervous system consists of your somatic and autonomic nerves so these are the nerves that extend from the brain and spinal cord and go off to all your muscles and glands and right now we'll take a look at the structure of a neuron so this is an example of a neuron kind of has like almost like a star like appearance at one end on a typical motor nerve and then there's a long projection and then these wrappings around that long projection so we'll talk about each of these parts so right here these little extensions right here are called dendrites and dendrites comes from the word tree they almost do look like tree branches and these branches actually go and reach out and make connections with other neurons and with muscle fibers and all sorts of things. So they're collecting information and passing it along the neuron and sending that information to the brain to be processed. So dendrites can make connections with other neurons and send the information amongst your entire central nervous system and so on to, to basically communicate. 
And this part here is known as the soma. It's also more commonly called the cell body. Um, in that cell body are your most of your organelles, so your nucleus and so on will be found there. This long projection is a pro basically a long extension of the cytoplasm of the cell body, and it has a special name. It's the axon, and then it branches out at the end into these axon terminals or axon terminal buttons. Right here, there's little gaps, and then there's these bundles wrapped around. So these bundles here are called Schwann cells, and collectively, these Schwann cells make the myelin sheath, and the myelin sheath acts as insulation, almost like the insulation on a like a, an electrical wire. It's an insulation on your neuron, and it allows the signal to go one direction and also speeds up transmission of a nerve impulse, which we'll talk about in a later video. These little gaps in here are known as nodes of Ranvier. And they actually help speed up transmission as well, because instead of having to travel slowly along this neuron, nerve impulses can jump from node to node in a process known as saltatory conduction. So that actually speeds up nerve transmission. If an, if a, an axon doesn't have this myelin sheath, uh, it cannot send signals as efficiently or at all. So that's a problem. Some neuro... Our autoimmune diseases or neurodegenerative diseases actually attack the myelin sheath. So multiple sclerosis would be an example of a disorder that causes the myelin sheath to be broken down. So the immune system actually destroys your myelin sheath and then you can't send nerve impulses. So our somatic nervous system is a voluntary system and it sends messages to and from our skeletal muscles. So our skeletal muscles are the ones that are also known as striated muscles, and they're under voluntary control. So if I wanted to move my arm, I could voluntarily do it. We can have reflex actions as well, which we'll talk about, but voluntary muscle fibers or somatic nerves control voluntary muscles. So there's something known as the reflex arc. Sometimes we want to send a signal so quickly that we don't want to have to send it all the way up to the central nervous system to the brain to think about it and then send the signal back for us to move our hand. So we'll take an example of the of putting your hand over a candle flame. If you put your hand over there and it's too close to the flame, you are going to trigger some sensory receptors and send that signal along a sensory neuron all the way to your spinal cord. But instead of sending the signal off to your brain to be processed, it bypasses it. And it, this is called an interneuron or in this diagram, a relay neuron. So that interneuron will then send that signal directly to a motor neuron, which connects directly to a muscle. And then that muscle will contract and you'll pull your hand away. So you don't have to delay in the reaction. So that would be a reflex action or a reflex arc. Our autonomic nervous system is an involuntary system and it controls our smooth muscles and our glands. And it's responsible for the flight or fight and the rest and digest reactions. So I thought it would be a good idea to talk about the three different types of muscles right now. Two of those muscles are involuntary uh, we can't control them we can't think about you know digesting food it just happens so smooth muscle would be that example so smooth muscle is the tissue that or the muscle that makes up our internal organs so like our stomach and our esophagus and so on so this muscle does not have stripes or banding patterns on it so that's why it's called smooth it doesn't have that striped pattern Two other muscle fibers, cardiac muscle and skeletal muscle, do have those striping patterns. You can see it here. Um, cardiac muscle makes up, it's the muscle that makes up your heart. So it also is involuntary. We can't tell our heart to beat or not to beat. Um, we, it just does, which is a good thing. Our third muscle type is skeletal muscle, and it does have these striping patterns. The only difference between skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle is cardiac muscle branches 
and skeletal muscle doesn't, but they both do have these striped patterns or striations found on them. Our parasympathetic nervous system is our rest and digest response. And its job is to conserve energy. So it's going to slow down processes that consume a lot of energy and will speed up other processes that are just the processes that we undergo during our daily life. So digestion, you know, bladder contraction. So we, you know, the urge to go to the bathroom, all of these things would be functioning during our, when our parent's sympathetic nervous system is activated or during our rest and digest response. Our sympathetic nervous system is known as our flight or fight response. And this process consumes a lot of energy. It speeds up processes that help you escape from danger and then slows down other processes. So if you imagine that you are being chased by a bear, you could have two responses. You could fight the bear or you could run away from the bear. Personally, I think I would choose to run away from the bear. Um, but to be able to get away from this bear, you need to be able to move quickly. So you are going to increase your heart rate so that you can transport oxygen more quickly. Your breathing weight rate will increase so that you can get more oxygen to your cells. Um, you would stop digesting meals because it doesn't matter if you're being chased by a bear. If you get eaten, you won't be able to digest the meal anyway. So you'll inhibit those processes. You'll speed up um, the breakdown of glycogen into glucose so that you can send that glucose to your cells for cellular respiration so that you can keep producing energy to get away from the bear. Um, you, your bladder would not be contracting and telling you that you have the urge to go to the bathroom because really you don't want to have to think about that. You need to get away from the bear. So all the things that would help you get away from danger will be activated. Your pupils will also dilate so that if you were in the dark, you could see better. So all these things would be stimulated during the flight or fight 